Game on, ladies and gentlemen. You're listening to Box Score Radio, brought to you by the Keaton Podcasting Network. I'm your host, Jay Keaton. It is Monday, March 11th, 2019. It was a very exciting weekend in sports. Uh, like most Monday shows, let's uh, go ahead and we'll go ahead and talk about what happened in sa- on Saturday. Um, we're going to go ahead and skip Fridays because, you know, going three days back, I don't really see a, a need to discuss any of those games or fights. But uh, Saturday night, great night in Kansas for UFC fight night. Headlined by Junior Dos Santos and Derek Lewis. But uh, we'll run through the main card real quick. Amari Akhmedov defeats Tim Bosch by unanimous decision. Total strikes, 58 of 141 was Akhmedov. Bosch was 64 of 121. Total strikes percentage, Bosch was better at 53%. Significant strikes, this is where uh, Akhmedov was a little bit better. He was 52 of 135. Bosch was 41 of 97. Akhmedov also... also was a little bit better at uh, pressuring Tim Bosch throughout the fight. Well, neither guy scored a takedown, but um, and Akhmedov did um, land a lot more um, damaging punches, if you will. So he gets unanimous decision victory. Tim Bosch, who I've been watching for years, probably his last fight. I mean, he um, he went on a fighter. You know, it's most. I think most of the time. You either want to go out a winner or you want to go out a loser, but you want to give everything you got. So, congratulations to both guys. Uh, next fight, though, Benil Dariush submits Drew Dober by armbar, 441 of round two. Um, he was able to lock in the armbar, and uh, Dober looked like he was going to escape, but Dariush was able to extend his legs. And uh, just before the referee could jump in, he let uh, Dober taps and Benil Dariush couldn't. He couldn't even believe it. He was shaking his head after the fight because he didn't think that he would actually tap from it, which is crazy. So Benil Dariush, that's two in a row for him. I think he started his career off at uh, like 12 and 0 or 13 and 0 or something like that. Now he's like 14 and 4. But uh, he's a dangerous fighter, you know, not too strong. Hell of a chin. Dober landed some great shots in there. But uh, he's, a, he's a well-rounded fighter. He's good in the clinch, wrestling, grappling, and he can strike. So I, I, I think at the lightweight division, he'll definitely be... He'll, he'll be one of those test fighters. You know, one of those, you beat me, you can, you can, you can compete for a title. You lose to me, you can't. He, he's one of those, you know... God, what's the word? I'm always looking for those... Uh, Pretty much a test fighter, you know where it's where you where you sit in the division. <clears throat> so congratulations, Benil Dariush. Lagoyev Ivanov defeats Ben Rothwell. Another heavyweight fight. My unanimous decision. I had this going the other way. I had Rothwell winning. Um, total strikes: Ivanov seventy-three of of one seventy-nine. Rothwell seventy of one sixty-three. Total strike percentage, advantage Rothwell, 43% to 41%. He also landed more significant strikes. Um, I think they looked at, there was an eye poke and there was a kick to the groin, which I think the referees took away from Ben Rothwell as far as scoring goes. And, uh, but, uh, what I look for in a fight is if you're taking center of the cage and you're being more aggressive and you're pressuring, you know, that 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 stands for something. You know, that means something. So, like I said, didn't agree. This is probably the one decision <clears> of <throat> the whole card that I didn't agree with. But nevertheless, Ivan and off gets another win. Nico Price knocks out Tim Means, 450 of round one. Um... And this one was actually uh, pretty competitive. I thought Tim Means was going to get him to the ground, possibly submit him. But Nico Price, heavy hands, dropped him a couple times and was able to finish him just before the round was over. That's a huge, 
victory for Nico Price. He's got the look. He he's got the stature, the stature, stature of a great fighter. It was a good one for him. Tim Means is is no pushover. You know, he's like the Michael Bisming. You know, he's you'll remember his name. He might not be the number one contender, might not be a champion, but he, you're, he's going to test you. Co-main event, Elijah Dos Santos, rear naked choke, submits Curtis Millinder. This is the one guy talks shit and then eats his words fight. Millinder said he wasn't able to get that uh, Dos Santos wasn't going to be able to get him to the ground, wasn't able to submit him, and he did just that. This always happens on one card. Somebody talks a lot of shit and they can't back it up, you know. And uh, Dos Santos, great win. He's got like he's like twenty and five or something like that as a career. He, he'll be one to keep an eye on. Finally, main event. This was a good one. Junior Dos Santos KOs Derek Lewis. One fifty eight into round number two. Uh, he landed a spin back kick to the gut in round one. And uh, looked like Derek Lewis was hurt. And then when he came in, Derek Lewis was kind of playing possum a little bit. Almost knocked him out a couple of times. But uh, Dos Santos is able to get the finish in round two. Um, I like Derek Lewis. He's a funny guy. He's a hard hitter. His grappling, you know, without mincing words, absolutely sucks. And, uh, you know, the only thing you got from him, and he doesn't have the, the hardest chin either. Anybody who's able to get a square shot on him has been able to put him away. So, you know, I, I expect Derek Lewis to go nothing but downhill from from this. He received a title shot a couple months ago against Cormier. Got submitted. Dos Santos now eighth ranked heavyweight. Who knows? And Ganu put out a tweet that maybe he might want to take him on. But I think Engano should fight Cormier next. And who knows where Junior Dos Santos is here. Why not Frank Mir Dos Santos again? I think they've already fought once. Well, I don't I mean, this is a big win for Dos Santos, though. So that wrapped up UFC Fight Night. Uh, pretty good card on ESPN Plus. Those are all the fight nights, which is where I'm going to be watching it. The next one, I think, is UFC London. Darren Till versus Masvidal. That's going to be a good one. I'm excited for that. Pretty decent card. The UFC's just keeps on rolling all right let's move on to alliance football week five action orlando apollos improved to five and oh they defeat the birmingham iron birmingham iron 31 14 players of the game for orlando qb garrett gilbert 23 of 35 286 yards two touchdowns he's averaging like 250 a game two two scores i mean this guy's Lighting up MVP of the league right now, hands down. For Birmingham, QB Keith Price, they made a switch. They went from Luis Perez to Keith Price. I think Perez was like 3 of 7 with an interception, not looking good. Um, Birmingham starting to go down. They were 3-0, and looking like one of the best teams in the league from top to bottom. But uh, now they're 3-2, and and they're like fourth in the power rankings, so... Interesting, interesting to see what they do next week. But Keith Price, 18-29, 234 yards and a score. Uh, difference here in this game, total yards. Orlando had 468 and Birmingham had 272. Rush yards, 182 for Orlando, 49 for Birmingham. Orlando is a passing team. You give them almost 200 yards on the ground, you're asking for trouble. So just an all-around ass-whipping for Orlando. 5-0, and only undefeated team. They are the class of the league right now. San Diego Fleet over the Salt Lake Stallions, 27-25. This was the best game of the year so far. Back and forth, Salt Lake was down two scores. Went ahead 25-24 with under a minute to go. San Diego, whose kicker made, I think, like four or five field goals. Kicks another one, like a 40-yarder to win the game. End of regulation, it was a Fucking fantastic game. Player of the game for San Diego, QB Mike Burkovici, 22 of 43, 300 yards and a touchdown. Wide receiver DeMorne Pearson L for Salt Lake. He had eight receptions, 130 yards. That's putting in work. Turnovers were the difference here. Everything else was pretty much identical. 
five turnovers for Salt Lake. You know, you give the other team, doesn't matter if you outgain them, you give the other team extra chances, eventually you're going to get burned on it. You know, the turnover di- differential is minus four, and you only you only lose by a game-winning field goal. It's it's still pretty impressive, but you can't give the other team opportunities to win. Atlanta, the legends over the Memphis Express, 23-20. I I really like Atlanta. They're two and three on the season. They got two straight wins. I think they're they've got a lot of pieces there. They could be a very good team near the end of the stretch. Running back Terry and Folston for Atlanta, eleven carries, eighty three yards, and a touchdown. He also had a receiving touchdown. That's putting in work. For Memphis, running back Zach Stacy, thirteen carries, forty one yards, and two scores. First downs were key here. Atlanta had 24, Memphis only 13. Third down efficiency. This is a big stat. Um, for anybody who knows anything about football, you look at third down efficiency, it'll tell you everything about the game. You know, you want to advance the chains or you want to get the other team off the field. Uh, Atlanta was 10 of 18. Memphis was 1 for 9. You know, it's how many three and outs is that? That's a lot. Too many. Again, all those numbers, total yards, Atlanta 410, Memphis 217. And I think the turnover margin was both two apiece. So, and somehow yet you only lose by a field goal. It's pretty impressive. They had the lead going into the fourth quarter, did Memphis. So this is competitive as you're going to get. This isn't, you know, backyard football, who cares if we win, who cares if we lose. Our paychecks aren't good enough. These people are competing. These guys are competing. They're wanting to get in the NFL. Would you rather look at this or the combine? I'd rather look at this. I'd rather let's see what he does against in football situations rather than some long jump, some forty yard dash. May I remind you, Tom Brady has the worst forty time of any quarterback. And correct me if I'm wrong, doesn't he have six yeah, six fucking championships? Six championships, two, three MVPs. The greatest, arguably the greatest football player, definitely quarterback of all time. He's got the worst 40 time. So what does it really fucking matter? Show me somebody who can play football. San Antonio, the commanders defeat the Arizona Hotshots 29-25. Players of the game for San Antonio, QB Logan Woodside, 21 of 27, 290 yards and two touchdowns. Arizona's. This guy is every single week the top player for Arizona, Rashad Rashad Ross. Five receptions, 106 yards, and a score. Every single week. I mean, he's somebody to look at. When you're the, cl- when you're the talk of the team every single week, it means something. He's a standout. Turnovers were the difference here. Arizona had five to San Antonio's two. Again, Three really close competitive games, and the one that wasn't was dominated by the best team in the league. So great action from the Alliance Football League this year, or this week. I was very impressed. This was the week, if, if you had most of the viewers watching it this week, then you've got, then you've got you know, something to hold on to. So just keep it up, guys. AAF, keep going, okay? I'm enjoying this. I love basketball, I love USC, and I love hockey. But nothing beats football, and it never will. Okay? And to see it in a time when you think it's over is just so fr- so freaking refreshing. So, great week for the AAF. Just to recap the winners this week, Orlando over Birmingham, San Diego over Salt Lake, Atlanta over Memphis, and San Antonio over Arizona. Okay, fighting's done, football's done, let's talk basketball, Sunday scores from the NBA, the Pistons over the Bulls, 131-108, to player of the game, Blake Griffin, 28 points, 6 rebounds for the Pistons, 3 point shooting was big for Detroit here, they were 19 of 35, the Bulls were 9 of 18, so the Bulls shoot 50%, problem is Detroit shoots 54% and they shoot 10 more threes. So remember I always say 99 times out of 100 you shoot 50% from three point land you're going to win. 
But if they shoot, the other team shoots better, it kind of nullifies that, doesn't it? Raptors over the Heat, 125-104. Kyle Lowry, 24 points, 10 assists. I'm guessing Kawhi's hurt. You know, he's not listed on the injury reserve or injury report. But, um... Oh, breaking news. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Conor McGregor arrested in Miami Beach for allegedly smashing a person's phone. Who gives a shit? He smashes Sony's phone. Does he really have to go to jail for it? Ah, uh, kid. He's not going to fight again anyway. Um, where was I? Oh, yeah. Lowry, 24 points, 10 assists for the Heat. Bam, Adebayo. Adebayo, 19.6 rebounds. Again, three-point shooting was key here. The Raptors, 21 of 40. The Heat, 8 of 27. 76ers over the Pacers, 106 to 80. To, excuse me, 106 to 89. Joel Embiid makes his return. He drops 33 points, 12 rebounds. Not too freaking shabby. That's kind of a theme, though, in the NBA. A big star leaves. He's either injured or is traded or something like that. He comes back. He has a great game. And then he falls back down to earth the next two or three games. So... Keep your eye on it. I wouldn't get too excited right now. Bojan Bogdanovic, 18 points, 5 rebounds. Points in the paint was really key here. Uh, 76ers had 56 and the Pacers had 40. All the other stats were pretty much identical. A few more 2s and 3s here and there for the 76ers. Gave them a 17-point win. Hawks over the Pelicans, 128-116. John Collins, 23 points, 10 rebounds for Atlanta. Frank Jackson had 23 points and 6 rebounds for New Orleans. Rebounding was key here, which is interesting because I, I take Atlanta as a smaller team. But they out-rebounded New Orleans, 61-48. Free throws were also a big difference. 15 of 18 were Atlanta. The Pelicans were a perfect 8 for 8, but when they get seven extra free ones it's kind of hard you know to you know what's that 100 percent from the free throw line mean when you give them more freebies anyway so grizzlies over the magic 105 97 mike conley 26 points eight assist nikola vukovic 26 points 10 rebounds double double for orlando um again same thing couple of baskets here or there a couple of extra free throws and that was pretty much the difference in the game Rockets squeak by the Mavericks 94-93 Eric Gordon leads the way for Houston 26 points Luka Doncic he's going to be a legend I mean he's you know like Aaron Rodgers is to Brett Favre well you can debate who's better I mean we all know talent wise who's better um, but Luca is going to be a stud. He's going to be the next Dirk, if not better. 19 points, 15 rebounds. He's a double-double machine every single game. He commands attention when he's on the court. Teams, These two teams combined for 84, 84 three-point attempts. It's freaking ridiculous. Okay, nobody wants to go inside because really nobody has any. Clint Capella is not good enough. Um, I don't know. Dallas really doesn't have an inside man, but... I mean, 84 three-point attempts combined. Come on. Try to play some basketball rather than just get the damn ball and shoot. Too much iso ball in the NBA. That's the problem with it. Timberwolves over the Knicks, 103-92. Taj Gibson leads the way for Minnesota, 25 points, 8 rebounds. Damian Dotson has 26, 6, and 6 for New York. Not too freaking bad. Turnovers were a difference here. The Knicks had 19 to Minnesota's 11. Fast break points was also a huge differential. The Minnesota had 24 and the Knicks had 9. You know, you got to be able to move the ball quickly down the court. Don't let your defense, don't let the other team's defense get set. Spurs over the Bucks 121-114. LaMarcus Aldridge again MVP, 29 points, 15 rebounds. The Greek Freak has 27 points, 13 rebounds. Just not good enough. Really, the difference here, field goals. Spurs, 49 of 100. The Bucks were 41 of 87. 
And finally, the shocker of the night, the Suns over the Warriors, 115-111. Suns have won like four of their last five. I mean, I've said it before, I'll say it again. They get eliminated. First team eliminated from the playoffs. Or first team eliminated from contention of the playoffs. And then all of a sudden now you start playing, you start beating the Lakers and the Bucks and the Sun and the and the Warriors. Give me a break. Come on now. Oh, that's the monkey off our back, like you were going anywhere anyway. Devin Booker, though, 37 points, 11 assists. Great freaking job. Clay Thompson led the way for Golden State, 28 points, 5 rebounds, 5 assists. Three point percentage was the difference here. The Suns shot 40%, the Warriors, 23%. All right, that is enough for the NBA. Let's talk about Saturday men's basketball scores. Let's just run through those real quick. I don't want to give any, de give any details about them since it was Saturday's games. Number two, Virginia over Louisville, 73-68. North Carolina defeats Duke, 79-70. Auburn upsets number five, Tennessee, 84-80. Kentucky over Florida, 66-57. Number 9, Michigan State, defeats number 7, Michigan, 75-63. I might have to eat my words about Michigan State. I, I think they can actually be a lot better. You know, about 15 games ago, I was saying that this team is just not what we're used to seeing a Tom Izzo team looking like, but they're looking pretty damn good right now. They're, they're getting hot at the right time, so I think they win the Big Ten tournament. Texas Tech over Iowa State, 80-73. to LSU over Vandy, 80-59. Number 11, Purdue over Northwestern, 70-57. Number 13, Kansas beats Baylor, 78-70. Florida State over Wake Forest, 65-57. Georgetown upsets Marquette, 86-84. Marquette, four straight losses. Just like Michigan State, Michigan State is peaking. Marquette is slumping. Nevada over San Diego State, 81-53. Number 18, Kansas State over Oklahoma, 68-53. Wofford over VMI, 99-72. Seton Hall over Villanova, 79-75. And finally, Temple upsets number 25, UCF, 67-62. Excuse me. All right, Sunday's games. Number 12, Houston defeats number 20, Cincinnati, 85-69. Corey Davis, 31 points, 6-6 for Houston. He's going to be a stud. Look out for him in the tournament. Okay, if, if Houston gets to the Elite Eight or Sweet 16, which I think they can, Corey Davis, he's going to be the name that's going to be, it's going to be haunting your memories, busting your brackets. Jaron Cumberland, 20 points for Cincinnati. Field goals were the difference here. Houston was 30-65. Cincinnati was 19 of 50, three-point percentage. Houston shoots 58, 52% to Cincinnati's 28% difference in the game. Number 21, Wisconsin, defeats Ohio State in overtime, 73-67. Khalil Iverson, 22 points, 14 rebounds for the Badgers. C.J. Jackson has 22 for Ohio State. OSU was down 58-36 to with... About seven and change left to go in the game. Came back, tie it up, take it in overtime just to lose. That is so freaking depressing. You come back from twenty plus down in under seven in in under eight minutes just to lose it in overtime at home. God, that sucks. Finally, yesterday scores number twenty two Wofford over East Tennessee State, Eastern Tennessee State, eighty one seventy two. That is the Southern Conference semifinal, so that's the first. Well, I don't think it's the first tournament. We got some tournaments that I've already finished, but um, again, it's it's conference tournament week, so I'm not gonna this week. I'm not gonna go through every single game. I don't care about a first Big Ten first round, ACC second round stuff like that. You know, once we get to the semifinals and finals, then we'll start popping up the scores. Until then. Um, it's mostly focused on the NBA and NHL this week, you know. Probably some UFC topic. We'll talk about UFC, probably give predictions on the NFL draft and uh, um, 
some predictions for the Alliance football this weekend. All right. Real quick, let's go ahead and go through, coming up on 25 minutes, let's go ahead and go through the NHL scores from yesterday. Panthers over the Red Wings, 6-1. to one. Capitals defeat the Jets, 3-1. to one. Penguins defeat the Bruins, 4-2. to two. Flames over the Golden Knights, 6-3. to three. And the Kings defeat the Ducks, 3-2. to two. All right, so that wraps up all the scores from this weekend. How about games tonight? Thunder taking on the Jazz. Give me the Jazz at home. Celtics travel to the to L.A. to take on the Clippers. I got to go with the Celtics. I don't know how clutch the Clippers are going to be tonight. I have more confidence in Boston in this type of atmosphere. I'll take Boston. And also NCAA Women's College Basketball Big 12 Championship game. You got number one Baylor. Take it on number 13, Iowa State. Why would you not pick number one? Baylor wins that one handedly. Just like I handled this podcast handedly. And that does it for Box Score Radio today. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Remember to follow the show on Twitter at Box Score Radio and listen on Podbean and YouTube for free. Thanks for tuning in, guys. And I.